Hey guys, Joe here, and thanks for checking out another video on the channel. I wanted to show off something that I recently acquired because it's something I've never had before. I've had Glock, obviously, but I haven't had this particular one. Let's start with the smallest gun I currently own. This is a Colt Automatic in 25 caliber. See, it's empty. This is the idiotiest, bittiest gun that I own, and it's hilarious because it's so small. Recently got this as well. We'll be taking this to the range and comparing it with Sam from Middletown. He has the Spanish version. I have the Colt. We'll see which one is more accurate for a pocket pistol. Moving up in calibers, I have a bunch of 9mm guns. One of my favorites right now is the A-Rex Rex 01T for a tactical. That's the threaded barrel, the optics cut, and the higher sights. As you can see, also empty. Very nice gun. 20 plus 1 capacity. Kind of a competition slash tactical gun. Really like that one as well. In 45, I do have my Kimber lightweight stainless. I've done some upgrades, different grips, grip tape, magwell, different front optic, all that, or front fiber optic, things like that to make this one mine. But this is my 45 of choice, the 1911. I love this style gun, grip safety, all that good stuff. Very nice firearms. And that leads us to the box in front of you. And that's not dirt on the sofa, it's just the way the pattern works. But in this Glock box, I love it, Glock Perfection, yet they stick a big-ass sticker on top of the case where you need to read what the frack it is. So good job, Glock Perfection. But inside of here is a gun in a caliber I've never personally owned. And that is 10 millimeter. Very large round, yet thin, so believe it or not, a 10 mil pistol can hold more than a 45. And we'll get back to that in a second. Show you the mag was empty, show you the gun is clear. Set that aside while we look at the box. This one came from Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Google them, I can't link them. But this one came in used and it was too good to pass up. Comes with two magazines from the factory. This one had a total of three, the other one's just in my range bag. And it has the laughingly called speed loader. Chuck that in a heartbeat. Inside this one, it's missing its lock and books, but it's a Glock. You can get those on eBay if you really need to have them. It does have its cleaning rod or for dragging your patches through the barrel. That's nice to see, but other than that, it is empty, which is fine because this gun is so big, it takes up all the room anyways, and there's no room for a bunch of accessories. But this is what you came to see, and this is what I'm going to show you. Again, one more time, so it's clear. This is a striker-fired steel slide polymer frame wonder gun. 10 millimeter is an incredible round. It was created to answer a call from the FBI. They wanted a round that was more powerful than a 9, obviously, and even more powerful than a 45. They came out with the 10 millimeter, which was quietly... Uh, kind of neutered and turned into the 40 cal because of complaints that people with smaller hands, i.e. small people, women, etc., were not really enjoying shooting the 10 millimeter, so they went to 40 cal. 10 millimeter, millimeter lay dormant for many years, possibly decades, until its recent resurgence with many manufacturers, including Smith & Wesson, a lot of 1911 manufacturers, uh, I believe also Glock, of course, but there's a few other companies that have been working on good 10 millimeter guns. Well, the 40 long slide, I almost said 40 cal because I'm an idiot, but the 40, which is chambered in 10, is an interesting gun because it's kind of a competition gun, but it could also be used in a tactical style scenario. It's hard to define what this thing really exists for because it might be out of the power factor for some competitions and it's it's just it's awesome because of what it is and how it shoots because I've already taken it to the range but it's also weird in that this gun even exists at all but let's take a look at it and again in no way am I being rude to the gun I'm just telling it it doesn't really make sense except for what it is which is what it is Leave it in the comments if you understand what I'm talking about. Looking at the outside, you'll see this is a Gen 4. Glock 
quietly killed the Gen 4 lineup because the Gen 4 lineup has finger grooves like a Gen 3, so why not just keep making the Gen 3, which is cheaper and more readily available modification parts exist, but it had the backstrap system like the Gen 5. So again, why keep a Gen 4 around? Currently, you can only buy the Gen 3 and the Gen 5 guns new. So to see a Gen 4 is going to become more and more rare and scarce, which is another reason why I picked this guy up up. This one is also MOS cut and the long slide. So it just trips a lot of cool buttons for me in that it is a goofy gun, it is a weird gun, it is a different gun, and I am down. Has your standard finger grooves as I said and it has the standard Glock pyramids. Grip is fine. I don't have any of the additional back straps. I may have to track some down because the 9mm ones do not fit on this. You need the ones for the Glock 21 and the Glock 20 because that's the 10 and 45 full size, which is what would fit on here. The frames are different. Very long sight picture because this gun has a 6 inch barrel from the chamber forward that is six inches ladies so if you really ever wanted to know that is what six inches looks like this is a 15 plus one capacity so you can run 16 rounds of 10 millimeter and if you have a 20 which is a shorter gun you still get 16 total rounds in it that is impressive especially since 10 millimeter is moving a lot faster than 45 thus giving it more penetration ability and making it a more powerful round yet you get twice as much in this gun as you do in this gun, which is, again, a very impressive feat. Only has rear slide serrations because it is a Gen 4. That's fine. Most people will only be racking it from there or like that. Or let's face it, if you have an optic, you'll just probably be grabbing the optic. Yes, you can lose zero. No, I don't care. Don't bother putting that in the comments. You can always put grip tape or pay somebody to cut the front of your slide, but that is a long reach, man. Very long out there. Has a white u with white front tight sot arrangement. However, it is adjustable for both windage and elevation in the back. They are still plastic sights, so I would recommend changing those out, especially for a high-vis front at the very least, and then I would scrape off all that white crap in the back. Personal choice, but it is the way I live my life. MOS cut on the top modular optical system or option system or whatever the hell Glock is calling it these days. It's pointless because you need the plates and none came with this particular firearm. I can't remember if Gen 5 comes with them, but Gen 4 did not. And you have to spend money to buy plates. That's a boo. Glock needs to learn from other companies. Just cut it for a direct mount RMR footprint. And that way you can just put something on it and get going. Internal extractor uses a plunger and a spring. We'll be looking at that when the top comes off and it's just your prototypical Glock. You will notice here the frame appears to be bent and warped. That's the way they all seem to be on these six inch guns. I think that's just manufacturing and done so that it has less flex this way because it's already flexed that way. Long dust cover with the hole in it, that's for getting to the front sight. We'll take a look at that when the top comes off. Let's talk about the trigger. It's a Gen 4, has the trigger safety right there, and it feels like any other Glock. You just pull back, breaks. Do I like it? Meh, it's fine. Do I hate it? No, it's fine. I took this one to the range and I was easily able to hit hostage targets, six inch and smaller, as well as run the plate rack with no issues whatsoever. I do need to buy more 10 mil to go out and give it a longer test though. The reset is just your Glock typical, right out there, same place as the wall, and it goes into the next shot. Not bad, let's go ahead and take her apart. In order to do that, drop the mag, make sure that it's clear. Yep, we are clear. And then being a Glock, you pull back, pull down the tabs, pull the trigger, push forward, and yoink it very heavily. You do need to reset the trigger on the 10 mil, or at least my particular gun needs to, in order to reassemble it, but we'll see that later. Inside here, you will see that kind of like the Glock 47 that recently came out, and the 48 version of the 43X. This does use a cup here in the dust cover to capture a shorter spring. This is the spring, same spring out of the 20 as it is in the 40. However, once you remove that, you can take out the long boy barrel. Like I said, six inches from the back of the chamber. Very nice. Has the serial number on there because this gun was designed and built in Austria and then imported. 
very nice grooves inside very accurate when i shot it and being a six inch barrel gives it an incredibly long sight radius even longer than my 1911 so that you can get a more accurate sight picture it does make a difference inside here there's no cuts here for lightening it i wish they would have done that a little bit because this son of a gun is very heavy and it's nose heavy it does help with recoil mitigation and muzzle flip Inside the frame, you will see it's just your standard Glock. There's your locking block. However, you will see that the rails come out and are very beefy. This is part of the rail and lock block system. And then you come back here and you have your rear. The ejector is quite an odd shape compared to some Glocks. I guess it needs to do that because of the length of the cartridge. Huh. Pardon me, I couldn't hold that yawn back. I've been holding it back for nearly three minutes, and it finally got the better of me. Otherwise, though, you will see that it is a absolutely normal Glock setup. Once you've field stripped it, you can reassemble it. It does have some Wilson Combat Extreme Lube. That's my brand of choice. I like it. I think it worked good. And Ballastarl smells funky. Once you get your spring reseated, make sure that it is horizontal. If there's any up or down uh, misalignment, the gun will not go back together the right way. Once you've done that, go ahead and run the gun back. You will see it will come back here. Just rack it, and your gun is back in bidneth. So what do I think of the Glock 40 long slide? I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. Will I be keeping it long term? That's hard to say. You know me here. I, if something really nice comes along, I can't afford to just buy whatever I want. So a lot of times a gun has to go on the bye-bye block. And that could be one of them because I bought it on a whim. Let me know if you guys like this kind of gun, the full ginormous long slide. If you want to see some other stuff. I know SHOT Show is happening right now. A lot of gun review tube channels are getting a lot of guns i'm not one of them even though we are over 100k i'm still not e-begging companies to do anything i'm working with a couple of companies on some sponsored spots and things like that if those come to fruition i will keep you updated on those otherwise come back i'm going to the range again this week i already have range video put together that will be going out or it went out before you saw this one it's complicated i can't figure out time in my head when i'm filming i'll just do it later so come back for that let me know what you guys think don't forget to get subscribed become a member we've got three or four now so eventually i will be doing some giveaways and yeah we'll just keep having fun also my plaque will be here in three days from the dime from the time that i'm recording this so don't be surprised if you see that pop up in a video so i'm gonna get out of here i'm going to bed it's like midnight and i have to get up and go to the range so come back for that i will talk to you later and yeah i'll talk to you later